Hey everybody! How you doing? Last Outrider here, and I have just made a discovery. Last time I said I did a section on warp creatures. As I've continued to read through Warp Trader or Rogue Trader page by page, I find another section called Warp Creatures. Yes, about 20 pages later, there's Warp Creatures, and then another section that literally just says Warp Creatures. So sorry here's warp creatures part two <laughs> this section is concerned with the many different creatures existing wholly or partially within the medium of warp space or which have special abilities powers or interests derives from there these creatures may be of an altogether different order to those of the material universe or they may be essentially normal creatures with limited warp space access. The number and variety of warp creatures can only be guessed at, and those presented here represent only a useful core of beings for inclusion in the game. Others may be invented by imaginative GMs as desired. Because warp creatures present players with special problems, it is a good idea to occasionally invent new ones or to modify the powers of existing ones. In this way, players will remain unsure of exactly what they're facing. And that's an important part of the game. Exclamation point. So let's, let's ponder that for a second. It has just been stated here that official canon is frowned upon in 40K. So if you bump into a player who says, ha 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 ha, look at this. Korn hates psychers. He hates them. He hates them. It says it, it says it right here. You, then, if you are running a campaign, could turn around and specifically create a psychic corn berserker. Why? Uh, because it's a good idea to occasionally invent new ones or to modify the powers of existing types. As they said, in this way, players will remain unsure of exactly what they're facing. And that's an important part of the game. So, if anybody thinks they know the lore, specifically make the exact opposite of it, because that's an important part of the game. <laughs> Many of the creatures described in the following section prey upon or exploit psychic creatures in some way. In particular, many are are described as being able to use an unprotected human psyker in certain ways. Unprotected psychers are human psychers whose uncontrolled psychic emanations act like a beacon in warp space. Some human psychers are strong enough to control their powers, and these do not count as unprotected. Such psychers are often recruited into Imperial services in some form. Only about 10% of all psychers is, are this strong. The remainder count as unprotected unless they undergo the soul-binding ritual with the Emperor and become astropaths. As a rule, psychic characters controlled by players will not be unprotected. Confound, confounding friends and... Na what? 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 Will not be unprotected. Oops, they went off to another area. Sorry. So there you go. 90% um, of human psychers are unprotected and are nothing but uh, warp creature bait. 10% of all psychers are strong enough uh, and the remainder. Wow. That is that psychers in the Imperium now. Next, we're going to go on to some of the some of the interesting creatures that they've managed to create. Uh, as you can see, wow, 
Let me let me let me just give you a list of some of the creatures that I'm going to be going through in the next in the next few parts. The first one is Astral Hound, Astral Specter, Enslavers, Vampires, Psycho Noonan. Uh, what else we got? Warp Entities. Okay. Uh, zombies. Uh, and then we go into alien creatures after that. <laughs> zombies count as warping. Okay, well, you're going to find that out. Yes, zombies in 40K. Uh, so stay tuned. And I'll see you next time.